3.6%. But uh, let's go across to Surbi now. She has an important guest with her. Surbi, over to you. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, well, we all know that this whole angel tax issue has been quite a bother uh, ever since uh, we you know, had the passage of the finance bill. And uh, unfortunately for the startup community, uh, the amendments did not take away the sting of the tax hit. Basically, what's mm. happened is that the purview of angel tax has now been increased to cover foreign investors as well, which means that in subsequent uh, rounds of funding, uh, foreign investors uh, will, whatever is the amount they're putting in the company above so-called fair market value, the domestic Indian company, the startup will have to pay tax on that. So we thought we'll uh, get in Mr. Sandeep, uh, Sanjeev Bikchandani, founder and executive vice chairman at InfoEdge to throw some light on this. He's of course an industry veteran and InfoEdge uh, does incubate a lot of these uh, businesses. Uh, morning, Mr. Bikchandani. Thank you very much for joining in. Your first thoughts, is, is this a very big hit that could really disrupt the startup's ecosystem? We are waiting and watching. Uh, certainly the feedback coming in from uh, overseas venture funds is of some concern. Uh, we are hoping the government comes out with further clarifications. Uh, this potentially could have impact, but we, how much we don't know just yet. Okay, so there is a wait and watch. I understand that's going on. What is the biggest issue? Is the valuation methodology uh, the key uh, sort of sore point? Is it the rate of tax itself? Because we know now that this is, will be uh, you know, income from other sources, so it gets clubbed along with business income. Is it that, the quantity or quantum of tax, or is it something else? What's really bothering you and the startup world? Change from the past. Now, if you can say, okay, tax will be X and it's flat, people can build it into the models and value the company accordingly because then they'll say, okay, from the outcome that we get, so much will go in tax. So what people want is certainty and predictability and, of course, fairness. It should not be an unfair rate of tax, uh, but uh, people want certainty and predictability. And they don't okay. want to be subject to a tax man's judgment, say, five years after the exit or three years after the exit or five years after the investment. But this is not a new tax, Mr. Bikchandani. This has been uh, in uh, existence since, I think, 2012. It's just that the purview is being, being extended to foreign investors right now. So how was the valuation done up till now? Is there a fixed formula that the tax man looks at? And do you expect the same will be applied to foreign investors now that uh, they are under the purview of the tax? The, po the point is that if the tax man felt that investment was made at a valuation that is... Uh, uh, higher than uh, fair market value, the tax man has discretion uh, to treat the surplus, the excess as profit in the hands of the company and then uh, tax in the corporate income tax rate. Right? Mm. Now, mm. this did not apply to AIFs. Mm. So, actually, if foreign investors come, coming from overseas are clubbed with AIFs, then it is still okay. But if they're not clubbed with AIFs, if they're clubbed with non-AIF domestic investors, there's a problem. We are waiting We are waiting and watching to see what the clarification is. Okay, so, so let me take up that point. So in case these foreign investors can come in as AIFs and register here, um, will that ease the hit? Uh, and is that what you're seeking in terms of clarity in, the, in that fine print? We're all awaiting the finance ministry to uh, come out with the details that will operationalize this new wider angel tax? Alternatively, SEBI can say, okay, fine, just register with us as foreign VC funds and you're mm. with AIFs. That's also a possibility. We are waiting and watching. So just to understand a little bit, what is the impact of this tax on your fundraising plans for your portfolio companies? Not really. We will we are continue to invest. We are uh, impacted and we, we consider the, 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 the market correction and especially in the US, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, some follow-on, uh, you know, investors are, are, might be a little constrained in investing in India. We're concerned about that kind of stuff much more than about this currently. Okay, so you don't sound too perturbed as of now in terms of fundraising. You're hoping that this clarity from the finance minister, uh, finance ministry will allow foreign funds to be clubbed as AIFs and then they'll get a tax exemption. So let's talk about that other uh, larger concern, the impact of this US uh, mini US banking crisis. Uh, has that really soured the environment and sentiment for fundraising in general? Longer term, see first the public market corrected and corrected substantially for new age tech companies. Mm -hmm. When that happens, you know, 
the late stage funding gets impacted in terms of valuations and you know eagerness to come in. Uh, if late stage funding gets impacted, then you know Series C, Series D gets impacted, then Series B, then Series A. Finally, seed funding does get impacted. I think the impact on valuations and speed of investment would be more than uh, whether or not good companies will get the money. Good companies will continue to get the money. So, is it fair to say that the funding winter isn't too severe? Because that seems to be the narrative, right? That there is a large funding winter coming. But you're saying it's not too severe? It depends on the company that's looking to raise the money and the quality of the company. For quality companies, there is no funding winter. There could be a valuation constraint. There could be a size around constraint. Uh, uh, you know, there could be a speed constraint, how fast you get the money. Uh, but, uh, but, they will, but you will get the money. Uh, it's for the companies that are not so good, especially in later rounds, that will, there will be a challenge. No, but the question is, what exactly is the definition, definition of quality companies, right? Is it uh, profitability? Uh, because now, I mean, it's, uh, it seems to be across the board, the fact that there's not much money coming in for startups. I mean, obviously, there's more concern about uh, unit economics, path to profitability, profitability uh, you know, uh, customer loyalty, customer satisfaction, uh, you know, all those things. Which were always there till about uh, till, till excess liquidity was came into the market. Uh, as far as the companies that went public is concerned, you know it was pretty obvious when they went public that within two three years they have to get to profit uh, to you know to continue to enjoy the confidence of public market investors. Uh, the valuation declined steeply uh, in many cases simply because of the U.S. correction in, in new age tech, uh, which was followed by the India correction in new age tech. So there's some market impact there, and there's, there's, there's some fundamental company in investor expectations of profit there, which perhaps have been brought forward. Well, Mr. Bikchandani, some of that is reversing, right? I mean, the Nasdaq, despite all this volatility, is still the best performing index in the US and pretty much around the world. Uh, so then uh, coming back to the market environment here, do you think the time is conducive with the lessons having been learned to take more companies public? Will you at InfoEdge be looking to take more of your portfolio companies public this year? Our advice to our private uh, portfolio uh, will be uh, get to profit before you go try to go public. And then uh, don't be aggressive on your pricing. In this market, you'll only get this price for this company. Uh, and, you know, a successful IPO is not depend on at what price you go public. It's about what happens in the aftermarket. Okay. Uh, so, but I don't see too many IPOs in our portfolio happening in a hurry. Uh, so, since we have you with us, uh, I mean, a slightly uh, off-track question. In general, IT, the overall sector, including services, do you see a broader slowdown for the rest of this calendar year, given that there's a lot of talk about delays in decision-making, perhaps even deferments in the U.S.? I, I don't particularly know, but, you know, I do know that uh, IT hiring is slowing down in India for, for, for the last quarter or two. And this is largely because of what's happening in the U.S. market. But really, one uh, sort of... Uh, informal anecdotal piece of feedback we've received from the US, and okay. this is anecdotal only, is that, you know, post-COVID, uh, you know, uh, there had been a boom in IT hiring and a boom for IT companies, and therefore people ended up hiring at very high salaries, simply okay. because talent was in short supply. And now when there's a slowdown, uh, people have discovered, companies have discovered that, listen, they're overpaying some people. And uh, at least part of the imperative downsize is coming from the fact that they have overpaid in the past, as opposed to we don't need to. So let's see, maybe in a couple of quarters, uh, things might change. What about internet companies in India? I mean, the tech stocks in the US are bouncing back, but will we see fewer IPOs here, you think? The India in tech, uh, equity valuations and markets and prices, tends to follow the US with a lag of a quarter or two. Because uh, there's a fair bit of U.S. money, overseas money, that comes into Indian capital markets. Uh, and if they see Indian uh, internet companies undervalued compared to the uh, people in the U.S., you might see some uh, firmness coming into those prices. But that activity is likely to be led by overseas investors and not domestic investors. Uh, we wait and watch. Okay, we will let you go on that note. Thanks a lot for joining in. That's uh, has the sum and substance of what uh, the way forward would be like in terms of the angel tax and the impact it would have. Let's slip into a quick break on that note. Uh